أنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون السلام عليكم and welcome to episode number nine, that's right, number nine of our series, Nation of Goodness. I'm joined by Imam Kareem Abu Zaid, that's right, he's back, I'm back, you're back. We're all back for this exciting new series. If you haven't seen the first eight episodes, please do so. Get on YouTube and check out his uh, YouTube channel, Islam Way 71 or Abu Wan Abdullah, that's me. Also get online, www.kareemabuzaid.com to check up with the Sheikh's latest thoughts, reflections, and Friday sermons. The last couple of episodes we've been talking about how to enjoin the good and forbid the evil. We wanted to talk about con consequences of not doing so today, but I think we're going to continue with this topic because Imam Kareem bring up a lot of good points and he has a lot more to share with you guys. So sit down, don't go anywhere, and enjoy, and enjoy this episode of Nation of Goodness. So without any further ado, let us welcome the Shaykh to the program. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh Kareem. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh malik. Jazakallahu khairan, jazakallahu khairan dear viewers. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. I want to let you know that uh, we originally planned to talk about consequences today, but I actually asked Brother Malik if he can allow one more episode just to recap maybe Malik and, okay. uh, and just add some more information about okay. how to go about enjoying good and forbidding evil because this is the core of the series really. Okay. This must be a very important topic if you want to continue with the fourth episode. Yes. Uh, so we can't just go out and do it any way that we see fit or, or, or we think is the best way to do it. There's a certain procedure right. uh, to doing this. Uh, Please let explain. Me, let me begin by saying, dear viewers, if you are a Muslim, uh, which uh, alhamdulillah you are, uh, there are two things here that you must focus on. And I'm looking at you, brothers and sisters in Islam. Number one, yourself you must become a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must become a abd or a abdah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Servants. You must fulfill the religion. Beginning with tawheed, oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, singling out Allah once it comes to his divine essence, attributes, names, actions of lordship, creation, sovereignty, and also disposing your affairs. Therefore, uh, as a result of this, then you single out Allah with your action. Okay. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, the sustainer, the provider, then it doesn't make any sense that you do any act for anyone else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we call Tawheed al-Uluhi. So you yourself have to do this. And then you begin the act of obedience. Uh, basically fulfill the commands, stay away from the unlawfuls. Do, you say, سَمَعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Do not do, you say, سَمَعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا So you're doing this, alhamdulillah. Then there is another task, which calling people to that. Right. Calling people to do that. Right. And this is what we're talking about. Yes, to tawheed, to, to, to do what is right, to stay away from what is wrong. And like we mentioned, Malik, what is right and what is wrong is to be identified and is to be uh, declared by Allah and His Messenger. Okay. No one else. No place for desire. Right. No place for societal norms. Right. No place for cultural practices. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are those two, uh, are the two who are uh, eligible basically to give us that type of information. So you do it and you call people to it. And calling people to it is in a way uh, da'wah in a way enjoining good and right. forbidding evil. Da'wah, once it comes to non-Muslims, right. you call people to the fundamental, which is the principle, right. which is what Tawheed first, which is La ilaha illallah. But with Muslims, you do something more, which is you get into the branches of the religion, and this is what we call enjoining good and forbidding evil. Do this, this is haram, this is halal. Do not do this, this is haram. Now, uh, not every Muslim Malik is qualified to actually uh, do this, educate people, talk to, the pe to people about Islam, for example, or talk to Muslims about halal and haram. So they are exempt, Sheikh? 
No, they are not. Then their job is to direct them to those who know. Okay. You see, at the end of the day, you could call people to listen to you so that they, you could convey the message to them. But if you're unable or not qualified because you lack the knowledge, then your job, Ya qawmi tabi'u al-mursaleen. And this is what the believer of Yasin did. وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَى الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ A man came from out of town and he said follow the messengers because he was in a way unable or right. uh, he was he unable to deliver. the knowledge. Yes. Okay. So you direct people to the source where they can obtain that knowledge. Brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, at the end of the day, you are doing this you're calling people to allah or you're calling muslims to do what is right to stay away from what is wrong you're trying to achieve you're trying to achieve three objectives okay three goals Where in your mind sense? number one you're, re you're trying to remind the people of the right thing so that they may benefit <laughs> right naturally right <laughs> Remind, indeed, your reminder may benefit the believers. So when you speak to an non-Muslim about Islam, he may listen. Wallahi, uh, Malik, sometimes, sometimes uh, non-Muslims approach me in, in my masjid, and I just talk to them for five minutes. He tells you, I'm ready. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm ready. Yeah. And yeah. subhanAllah, there are people who you've been speaking with for, uh, for the last 10 years. <laughs> right. They are not ready yet. Yes, so you never know. <laughs> yeah, right. You never know. فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْطِرْ Remind because you're just a reminder. You're not to force people. You are not going right. to be able to force people to do what you want them to do. So objective number one, that you want to be a reminder okay. to them that this is the right thing to do. Number two, you want to take yourself, remove yourself from the area of blame. Because I'm telling you, you're supposed to convey, you're supposed to deliver. Your messenger in his farewell sermon, he said to his companions, which really also a statement which is made for the rest of the ummah until the day of resurrection. Now I deliver the religion. He asked them, have I delivered? They said, yes, we bear witness. Now it's your job to deliver. Right. Go, disperse, deliver. So now you are a Muslim. You're coming out of the area. You have fulfilled that obligation. Okay, put it that way. You yes. fulfilled your obligation. You fulfilled your obligation. Also, you have taken yourself from the area of the plane. You have removed yourself. Because next episode, and I don't want the brothers and sisters to miss the next episode because we're going to talk about the consequences. There are serious consequences. If you do not enjoy in good and forbid evil. Okay. And we're going to talk about it next episode. So when you do this, when you call people to Allah, whether they are non-Muslims, or when you call Muslims to do what is right, stay away from what is wrong, you have fulfilled the obligation, the command to convey, and also you have removed yourself from the area of blame, because the Prophet says, if you see evil, you must do what? So you're, you to must try do to something it. about right. it. So you would be blameworthy if you didn't do anything? Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to talk about it once we talk about okay. the consequences. Okay. Another three goal that you're trying to achieve. The third goal. The third goal yeah. is you're trying to establish the evidence against the people. This is my very strong language, my favorite. I, I elaborate, Sheikh, on this. Well, listen, at the end of the day, brothers and sisters in Islam, you do not guide people in that sense. You do not force people to be guided. Right. Listen, when they spoke about guidance, they have divided it into two <coughs> types. Hidayatu dalalati wal irshad, that you show the people the direction where they need to go. But there is another type which is hidayatu tawfiq, which is you actually do what people directed you to. Right. Example, you wanna, you're in Washington DC, you're right. in Maryland, and uh, brothers who are living there, they may rejoice over that. <laughs> you wanna go to Virginia, I tell you take 495, the Beltway. <laughs> right, right. Uh, what, what did I do? I guided them, but I guided <laughs> them to what? 
the direction to the way right. that's yeah. it but can i force you to go on that 495 i can't right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who must give you the tawfiq who must bestow upon you the tawfiq to take that route right. and this will be based on your intention inside you you know that this is the right way to go but you know what i'm not going to listen to this guy i'm not interested right. and based on this allah will take you or will leave you in a way so my job is to let you know about the right way and by doing this i'm establishing an evidence against you because listen at the day of resurrection allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a rule that he's not going subhanahu wa ta'ala he's not going to punish anyone without sending a messenger وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We are not to hold anyone accountable or punish anyone for anything that we commanded him or her to do without sending a warner, a messenger. Now, my job, we're well not messengers, so don't mistake me. We are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our job is to establish the evidence against people. رُسُولًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْدِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُولِ Messengers who bring glad tidings and bring warnings to the people so that in the day of resurrection the people are not going to have an evidence saying i didn't know ya rab they won't have an excuse nobody I, told me nobody told me right. nobody told me so when you engage in the work of da'wah when you engage in the work of enjoining good and forbidding evil you're trying to achieve those three goals okay. remind the people fulfill the obligation and remove yourself out of the area of blame and uh, the third one is to establish the evidence against, against people that. and shaykh before we go to the break you said on the day of judgment someone can't this person who will not have the excuse in saying you know what nobody told me on the reverse side what what if that person said nobody told me you know and i knew malik for example he was muslim and he never gave me the message now malik becomes blameworthy right. for example right? right so subhanallah it's very interesting yes, yes. Okay, where are we going in the next segment we're going to continue with well uh, the next segment we want to talk about actually how you go about okay how do we do it actually how you do it how are we going to implement steps three steps okay yeah i mean a lot of other people they mentioned five and six and seven and eight but i'm going to sum them up in three steps okay what if you see something doing wrong what do you should do first okay. then two then three okay perfect inshallah. you guys here inshallah you guys heard from the shake stay tuned to learn how to implement the good and prevent the evil we'll be right back <laughs> Islam is a comprehensive way of life. It deals with everything. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to empower people and he wanted them to feel the responsibility, not just to rely on the state, the companions عنهم, and in particular Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. In the beginning they were not pleased and they were not proud to become the Khalifa. These days we see the candidates running to become the Amirs. Islamic State has to provide all inhabitants with the basic needs. It has to fulfill their basic needs. One of the main foundations of the Islamic State is to establish justice. Welcome back, dear viewers of Nation of Goodness. We're talking about how to enjoin the good and forbid, forbid the evil with Imam Kareem Abu Zayd. Sheikh, you're talking about three steps to, to implement what you've been talking about. The viewers really want to know, I want to know, what are these, what are these three steps that can help us implement enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Dear viewers, the first step 
must make sure you must make sure that the person is educated about the subject matter okay why was uh, even even Malik before you label somebody to be a disbeliever uh, a munafiq you must remove the misconception right you must re uh, remove the you see uh, the ummah has hit uh, uh, bottom rock they say yeah we've hit rock bottom rock for bottom. sure it seems like these rock days <laughs> bottom yeah. big time yeah especially once it comes to the knowledge of Islam, knowledge of the religion, zero right. knowledge of Islam. Now, I was amazed at one time, I was in Hajj, and I saw a brother from a distance wearing his ihram and smoking. I've seen it myself, Sheikh. But this one told me something, and I have no right to say that he is not telling the truth, because by default, al asl fil Muslim, that he speaks the truth. Right. I asked him, Akhi, this is not the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Wallahi, Ya Sheikh, it's the first time I hear somebody telling me that smoking is haram. <laughs> I of mean, course. I don't know what to laugh or what. I mean, it's sad. I know, it's but, sad. but sad hey, true. I have no right to say that he is not telling the truth. Yeah. And I could sense in his face. Uh, right. You see, he's from the Middle East. Right. The Middle East here, people were, were brought up into this culture. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, smoking yeah. is like... Candy, like bubble gum to Everybody Americans. Everybody is doing it. He saw his parents doing it. He's doing. Yeah. It's like a, a cultural it, norm. It's a cultural norm. Like society. Americans chew bubble gum. Right. <laughs> now, for him, he was brought up in this culture. But he has never been taught that smoking is haram. So now I went and I said, "Why are you doing this?" Without asking him I see. the ruling regarding smoking. Do you know it's halal? Right. right. Do you know it's haram? I see. So apply this to any other thing. Right. Listen, if you do not know the person and they, you see them doing something wrong. Uh, okay. Good point. Uh, al, al, another example. And may Allah have mercy on this brother because he died. I was an imam and I was leading the salah. A brother from Africa. You know the brothers in Africa, West Africa in particular. And Sierra Leone, he's from there. Yeah. I remember him. May Allah have mercy on his soul so he died. Uh, Subhanallah. Uh, and, and I was praying Fajr and the brother was behind me. And then I heard him saying the intention loud. Right, out loud. S out loud with his, uh, uh, t of course, he the intention. He pronounced it loud, yeah, right. The intention is not to be pronounced right. with the tongue. The intention is the act of the heart. And niyyah huwa azmu al-qalbi ala fi'l al-am. That you resolve in your heart to do something. Right, right. There is uh, no need for the tongue. So he's standing behind me in the salah and he's saying, Now I to usalli salat al asr and so forth. And I went and I, and I attacked him. Hmm. I will never forgive myself. I'll really? never forgive myself. I went, What are you doing? This is a bid'ah. I did that. And I think it was wrong to do this. You know what he told me? Wallahi, I did not know. I did not know this is a bid'ah. Yeah. A lot of us fall into yeah. that pitfall. Right, right. A lot of us do, which right. is very sad, because we expect the Muslims, we expect the people to be aware of this, but they are not. Right. They never been taught. They never right. received the information. We had a deficit of information in, 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 in informing p Muslims about the religion. Right. Those are two strong examples, Sheikh. We were deprived, a lot of us, from the uh, knowledge of Islam. A lot of Muslims now, as soon as you, you tell them about the truth, they go for it because they did not know. So you, before you act like a judge, uh, you act like a person who is about to punish people right. uh, and, and reward people for, for following you or disobeying yeah. you, make sure that they know about it. Right. Make sure that they know about it. So that's step number one, Educate. education. Okay. Educate. Of course, this may not apply to somebody that you know who knows. Right. Yeah, and it's somebody that you went to school with, listen, you've been in the same class, yeah. you went to Islamic schools, already you were sitting together, he knows it's wrong, yeah. that's different. You know he knows, yes. that's different. But someone else that you do not know he knows, then right educate. away you have to educate them. So this is step number one. Step number two, like I always stress, take yourself out of the picture. And this is what we call admonition, mawa'idah. Present the subject, قَالَ الله, قَالَ رَسُولُ الله. فَعِظْهُمْ وَقُلْ لَهُمْ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَوْلًا بَلِيغًا Speak to them in a form of admonition. Brother, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ If you do this, يعني سبحان الله, very famous, uh, uh, always situation that I face all the time. When I see a brother who is wearing gold, 
I say, brother, do you know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, if you wear it in the dunya, you're not going to be able to wear it in Jannah, and this is haram for the men of the followers of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And I that way that fact and if you do this allah will reward you for following the messenger and allah will bless you and, and so right, forth right. so you have to present it to them in a form of admonition okay that you're trying to bring about their you speak to their hearts right and their brains right. to their minds so even the mind sometimes is in the heart right. and, uh, this is another <laughs> beside the point <laughs> but in in general you try to educate them in that fashion. You okay. bring about the evidence. You see a problem, brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, with the people who attempt to enjoin good and forbid evil, they end up bringing their own thoughts. Right. Uh, brings analogy of the dunya. When the Quran and Sunnah is sufficient to suffice the subject. It becomes a personal attack. Absolutely. Right, yeah. When you speak like this, you, you're enforcing your thoughts. Right. You're enfor enforcing your, your ideas on the person. Right. You don't want to do this. Right. No, you want to bring the messenger of Allah, you want to bring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of that person. Qala Allah, qala Rasulullah. So are you a Muslim? This is what they said. Right. And you know what? There are consequences. If you fulfill and submit the covenant between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, saying, I hear and I obey, then Allah will reward you. If you refuse, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you. So this is step number two. Now I want to say before you jump to step number three, <laughs> repeat. Repeat step one and two. Repeat. Why? A lot. A lot. Yeah, uh, Malik, Nuh alayhi salam spent calling his people 950 years. Repeat. Over and over. Over and over again. But repeat it with different mediums. Right. Instead of you speaking, maybe, okay, uh, find a CD, find a lecture right. of a famous person that the brother may like, right. or someone who can maybe communicate to his uh, uh, line right. of Different form. approaches. Different approaches. Yeah. Repeat with different approaches. Repeat, 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 repeat. What if? Right. What if he didn't respond to you? It's then report them. The third step is to report to the authorities. Report them to the authorities. Because you've done what you could. Well, you use because forcing them is not going to work. Right. But report them if, if in a community, report them to the imam. Right. Uh, report them to the father if they are children. Uh, right, right. Uh, report them to the mother. Or the police. Um, Government. Well, if, this is a different subject. Well, it's a different subject. But yes, if the uh, issue is, Related is to harming that. to the people at large, right. uh, absolutely. You could do that. But uh, this is another issue that maybe we can shed more light on. But you want to report it to the people who are uh, basically in charge. Because then it becomes, people might say a gossip. If I No, it is not. People might say this. No. Al-Qadh laysa bi fi sittatin. Uh, what is backbiting? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, based on the authentic hadith, he asked his companions, "What is backbiting?" Atadruna um, malghiba. They said Allah and His Messenger know best. Then the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Backbiting that you speak about your brother or sister in their absence and you say something that they may dislike. For sure." what you're going to say is something that they will dislike. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because you're going to report them, report right. something bad that they are doing. Yeah. But in certain cases, in certain situations, it is permissible. And Which, uh, What are those cases? Well, case number one is to uh, left oppression. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like for you to bring about um, something bad or you speak about something bad unless you're trying to uplift oppression. oppression. Okay. Case number one. Case number one. We know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came uh, a companion in hadith fi al-adhab al-mufrad al-imam al-bukhari hadith Abi Huraira. Uh, one of the people came complaining about his neighbor to him. Rasul, uh, the neighbor is complaining about right. uh, his neighbor. Right. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you know what, go and take your belongings out of the house, put it on the road, and if the people pass by you, just let them know you did this because your neighbor is treating you bad. So here is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directed him to do what? To do this act. Right. 
he's actually going to disclose yeah, right, his right. oppression. Okay, I see your point. Right. Yes. And he did this, and at the end of the day, the people started cursing the man. He came to the Prophet ﷺ so and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I will never go back to this. And he said, go and take your neighbor back and apologize to him. Okay. So that's case number one. Case number two, if you're seeking fatwa, okay. Hind bint Utbah, al hadith fil Bukhari, came to the Prophet ﷺ, and she said, Ya Rasulullah, my husband Abu Sufyan is Rajul al Misik, stingy. He does not give me money. Mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't you l think that Abu Sufyan would not like this to be said yeah, about him? Of course. Yeah. Because this is, this is what backbiting is. Right, but he, she needs that an answer. That you say something about another person in their absence that they may dislike. But in this particular case, right. it is what? It is permissible. Because she has to Because say. she wants to find out how she's going to take care of her, herself yeah. and her children. Right. How yeah. she's going to spend on the family. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Take from his wealth without his knowledge what is sufficient for you and your children, but bil ma'roof. Don't overdo it. Right. Only what is sufficient right. according to what is customary. Right. So this is exception number two. Al-Qadhu laysa bi ghibatin fi sittatin. Mutadallimin. Mu'arrif. Somebody who is you're trying to let the people know about him. Uh, for example, uh, you have a daughter and somebody came to marry her. And that, that person is in my community. You call me and you tell me Sheikh Ahmad is interested in marrying my daughter. What do you know about him? You think okay. I should refrain from No, of course not. No. You have to say this. Well, if yeah. he drinks, I'm going to tell you, brother, yeah. stay away from him. He drinks. Yeah, okay. Even so, it's backbiting, but it's permissible in this, in this case, case yeah, right, of course. to actually do this. Mujahiran fisqan, someone who openly disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For sure. Because it's open. It's, it's known. openly. Right. You don't have a problem with it. وَطَالِبَ إِعَانَ فِي إِزَالَةِ مُنْكَرِ that you needing help. There is somebody out there. Uh, ideal example, we had this little boy. His name is Bilal. He's in, 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 in the masjid in, in, uh, in Maryland, in, in PGMA. MashaAllah. And I taught this subject that the conditions or the cases in which it is uh, exceptional, basically, that you could report uh, right. uh, people uh, without uh, being guilty of backbiting. So the little boy went out to the street and he saw somebody messing out with the cars. He's a little boy right. messing out with the cars of the right. people. Right. He came back and told the whole mess, there is someone out there. <laughs> so you could do that. Right, right. So there are cases yeah, that right. you could report people to the people who are in charge so uh, they can in order to change that evil. So that's step number, number three. three. Thank you so much, Sheikh, for this uh, episode. I think it was very important. Now we want to, you've clarified the three steps to, you know, enjoining the good and forbidding the evil. Next episode, we want to talk about consequences right absolutely it's gonna be a heavy episode i think inshallah okay We're looking forward to it inshallah, inshallah. thank you so much you guys at home i know you're looking forward to it as well so don't miss the next episode of nation of goodness until then i leave you in the care of allah assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh <laughs> ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون